<laughs> hey Sam, welcome to the show. Thank you, Arrow. It's great to be here. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to this because of Moonstream. Uh, why am I interested in it? Is in just last eight months, you guys you handle over three billion dollar in transaction volume in just eight months with Moonstream. Yes. So I think the perfect place to kickstart this session um, with this question: Can you kick off this session with the game? to see what's get dressed first please tell us the story behind it it's a ted talk yeah Just yeah, yeah sure background. sure yeah. sure so uh behind um be, you mean behind moonstream the story behind moonstream and all that mm. so um so basically at uh moonstream we believe in mm. in games you know three billion people play games around the world and mm -hmm. so far we have been playing sort of you can call web two games um but mm -hmm. we believe in sort of the future of web three games because mm -hmm. it gives the power back into the the hands of the of the game developers um, and it gives them a lot more tools to go and publish games acquire users and and all that so so hence mm -hmm. uh, hence moonstream the team that already exists i work quite closely with the with the ceo of of moonstream and um, um it's a we are a small team of about i think 14 people now um mm -hmm. And um, the CEO is based out of um, San Francisco um, or near San Francisco or like Bay Area, um, as it's called. Um, so I, let me give you a brief um, description of what Moonstream does. Um, mm -hmm. And and then I'll go a bit into what is Web3 gaming, how is different to Web2 or Web1 gaming mm -hmm. um, and why we see that as the, as the future. Um, and once again, just to clarify this three billion dollars does not belong to us it's just the transactions going through our system using our mm, product of course. so mm. yeah yeah so but that's still, not our still money still it, is, it is still it is still very very significant um amount mm. and we've been in so much demand it's like um my calendar is full with all these projects that want to use our product and we're just going through and finding out you know which are the best projects we want to to partner with and and support and all that so um to give you an idea i'm sure you're aware of all the nfts and mm. over the last eight months um, a lot of the nft projects they don't have a lot of utility they are trying to paddle on basis of community mm. and the communities are very dead as well <laughs> like is it not really dead but the communities people are there just to see um you know if it's really selling or not they're not really there to build form of community they're just seeking alpha they're just saying that okay what's happening is are people really buying this should i should i buy this they just want to see or should i sell this is it time to sell is everyone leaving <laughs> so that's all uh, the communities are doing a it, lot of it, is it, projects is it most of them are just collateral without mm, no utility at all um even the utility the utility mm. is pretty um, useless. A lot of them, um, mm. j just to be just to be honest, because you know what utility they say. Oh, we'll do Twitter Spaces, or we'll do some meetup on Zoom, or some um, mm. in real life event. But then that might not be useful. There is no transactions happening with that um, NFT. Whereas, oh, so they just sit there. No one, no market. There. Oh, they, they just sit there nothing happens with the nft so people buy the nft and then they just hope that someone else will want it for um some more money and then they will be able to resell that so that is what goes on in a lot of the nft market but then um that can only go on for so long you know they there has mm. got to be some use um otherwise it's just a it's just a silly jpeg it turns into that um <laughs> unless there is some utility attached to it mm. um and gaming is one of the utility we see a really mm -hmm. sort of a strong case um mm. to give and and to explain why i have to give you an example of what is first of all web3 gaming so um so have you played any games in your life of course i do of course, oh. exactly so it's very hard <laughs> i've not met a person who hasn't played games in their life um what, okay what what game did you used to play doesn't matter it could be on mobile could be on v could be on steam could be on any platform or xbox or whatever what game did you play or uh, you used to play 
use uh, let's first talk about the use way in the web 2 world because yes, uh, web 2 world, web yeah. 2 world, yes. Uh, uh say like SimCity, Grand Theft Auto GTA. Yes. Uh, uh, those kind of game, and then after uh, in these few years, say like I will look into the sandbox, but I haven't actually played it yet. But I, yes. I just find their characters so mm, it attracts me. And some other review games, uh, say like I another a friend of mine just launched a game called a a Dino, uh, which is a horse horsing game and then I'm still looking into it but I, I haven't put my hands on it uh, yes. because I'm yeah but anyway, no, a lot I of the web games there. are not there yet we are in the age of like you know in Nokia there used to be the snake <laughs> we are, ah, the, we ah, are that I early that. <laughs> yeah yeah we, we are that early I'm just I'm just giving an example we are that early but you know how talking about web 2 games when you play GTA and you have a character Trevor or whoever you know in that game and then what happens to that character when you stop playing nothing happens you know that character mm. dies in a way um same thing you upgrade your car you keep upgrading your car and does not matter what game it is it is mario or or space invaders and you have your invading ship like the small one um you know those things um they are lost they are as soon as you stop playing but the whole premise of web3 game is that that character that you kept upgrading that you kept building um that character, character. you can it you can take that character out and then if once you are done playing, you can gift it to your niece or nephew or or sell it on a open sea or open market, mm -hmm. like sell it on a marketplace and make something out of it. Um, so that is the or you can take it from one platform to another. You can take it from that game to sandbox in that metaverse. Mm -hmm. And it would look of that aesthetic. You know, it would have mm -hmm. that sty style styling. So um, so that is the premise of Web3, Web3 gaming and um and same thing with loot boxes whether it is you open a loot box you get a loot box and and are you, what if you referring to the uh, mainstream loot boxes yes i'll come to that i'm co oh. i'm coming oh, to okay. that cool, yes cool, yes cool, cool. this is uh <laughs> my sort of way of explaining for any of you because you are a lot more knowledgeable but some listeners they might be new to web3 gaming they are like an expert at web2 games but this might be a whole new topic for them or or for mm -hmm. game developer you know if they're listening to your show then um so this is just to a segue into that and then the thing is that okay you get a loot box you don't want it but you are done you are stuck with it now <laughs> now there is like a sort of a marketplace or marketplaces that you can sell those loot box. But as a game developer, what do you do when you have only Web2 gaming experience and there's so few Web3 developers in the world? Um, for mm. those sort of people, they can use our product, our game engine um, to, um, to deploy that. So say you created an NFT project, you have all these uh, uh, mini dinos, say, or something, or mini um, mm. sort of unicorns or something, and then you want to create like a race for them, um, or you want to, to create loot boxes for them so they can upgrade their unicorns and have a helmet and a body armor mm. and all these different things of different styles for that, then you would use our engine. And what our so can the, the prerequisite uh, of uh, a gaming company comes to Moonstream is uh, I need to have some sort of NFT first. Is that right? They uh, they can or they can um, create a game ah, on it. chain or or off chain, and then they want to do loot boxes. They want to do airdrops, and they can use our platform. They can we make it so easy that um, you can. Um, import or like sort of um, import a spreadsheet of all the people you want to reward and um, with loot boxes or whatever it might be with their addresses. And then you just import that onto our platform and then um, attach it using our APIs and SDKs to your um, sort of front end. So you still need your graphics people. You know, you still need to have the front end skills like the graphics and the the look and feel but in the back end our program does so people can go there um to your game they can see the loot boxes and once their mm -hmm. wallet connects and they can download that loot box or claim that loot box and things like that so Got um it. 
So, so that's what our that's just an example of what our platform can do. So, can uh, I can I interrupt here? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, yes, uh, either, so, I I can either bootstrap everything with Moonstream. I don't have anything yet. I can come to Moonstream. Yeah. Hey, I use your backend. You give me all the um, engines to build everything, and then I build on top of it. Or yes. this is the first case. And the second you can case, even I use a game from our mini game library, but it will still need your um you you would still need the you know the design the aesthetics the look and feel so we one of our client is crypto unicorns so they use but they have their own unique like art style and and they yeah. still have like you know because you want to make it nice for the for your pl game players so if they open the loot box so there's like confetti and everything and all that so you mm. want to do that sort of experience so you still need the design skills and all that mm. um to to do that but in the back end you would use our um software whether you want to put leaderboards on chain or um so then you're um or you want to do loot box or you want to do airdrops airdrops are very very simple especially on polygon or ethereum and then you just upload a list of all the people you want to drop airdrop to and mm. and our software will look after it so it will create those sort of smart contracts and stuff um but um so, so, so again, this yes, is the, the yeah this is the first case i uh, starting uh from scratch absolutely uh square one the second case yes. uh, the second question i want to ask is uh, can i come with you with say like i have or i do already have a game say like uh sandbox i have a character yes. from sandbox and i am the owner of this game can i yes. bring some of my character nft into moonstream and build some other thing Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, um, what, yes, yes. So, uh, so basically, you can think of like then you will have to um work with someone in our team who will help you and guide you on what you need to do. Um, yeah. Um, but basically, you will use our sort of uh, game engine or building block. So you still be responsible for the front end design and things, and you'll connect using APIs or ABI. Um, with our platform and it's an open source so you can go to github and have a look at it and all that and and have a look at the documentation um mm -hmm. on our site that yeah um are you um just out of curiosity are you planning to launch a collection or something <laughs> Oh, I'm just right. interested in it. I am still yes. uh, not for now, at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is yeah, a big undertaking. I... But you know what we are really bullish about is like really small or one or two person team games. As long as there is some sort of a strategy or something in the game and there are parts of it on chain and and all that. So we are quite bullish on that. There, there has to be some gameplay because what happened is as soon as you involve money people behave differently it is no longer a game it becomes work <laughs> and that's what happened in in philippines with xe infinity and all that that um as soon as you have all these characters and then when more people want to play with these characters the value of these nfts go higher go up, and then yeah. yeah go up and then it starts to become like an investment and people start mm -hmm. grinding and all that sort of uh thing so people don't have fun <laughs> because uh, they are approaching it in a different way. So the biggest challenge for Web3 games is going to be how do you preserve fun while still having that course. financial aspect to it? <laughs> because it's like in, in GTA or you play Mario or something, you know, you, you don't get money if you go to the next level, higher level or go on the leaderboard or um, your character does better. But if you have a winning NFT winning character with some unique characteristics and you start mm -hmm. doing well and more people are playing, then everyone will want to buy that character. And then suddenly it's worth a lot more. So then you're um, kind of it's encouraging people to grind, um, but then people lose fun. And as soon as things like this happen, like what's happening right now in the market, the market's going down. Um, in the when the market's going up, that's fine. But when the market's going down, suddenly you were earning hundred dollars a day in Philippines, and now suddenly you're earning six dollars a day, and then it's not worth it. You might as well go and work for McDonald's and make more money. <laughs> and <laughs> so, um, even in Web two world, the to make the games last long is pretty hard job. 
um, let mm-hmm. alone when people are looking at it like work. So, um, so this is going to be a very challenging time for um, for it's only the real projects which have real intrinsic joy <laughs> attached to it. You know, <laughs> you get real joy out of playing it. Only those are going to survive. And and all those NFT projects, which you know, those launch like ten thousand NFT collection, which are just pretty JPEGs. Those are gone. <laughs> those are oh. all gone to zero already. If not, um, they are going in the next month. I can I can guarantee oh. that because there is nothing for people to interact with on an ongoing basis. There is no activity. Um, at I mean, how many Twitter spaces people are gonna go and join, or how many um, Discord AMAs? You know, ask me anything type sessions people are gonna join. <laughs> so, you, uh, at least with a game, people play on an ongoing basis. Um, and the key thing that any game should look at is that how can you get your community to collaborate and compete with each other and how can you give them a sense of progression because you know whether you're playing gta or mario you have a sense of progression that okay um it it um your character goes from one level to another level and there is something to look forward to mm. so how do you get, give them that how do you keep you'll have to keep making new types of loot and new types of clothes and armor and all sorts of things um mm-hmm. to to um to enable that um but at least then it becomes a real project um unlike mm. a lot of the nfts <laughs> which was uh-huh. just like a money grab <laughs> Mm. I yeah. am just curious. Uh, uh, it seems like all the referee games now are uh, are starting off totally from scratch. Uh, it yes. is not the web two game migrating to the referee world. Is there any things happening, say like GTA or uh, Mario, uh, all of the games that I play, uh, are they migrating yes. to this referee world? I, I have no they knowledge are about. Not. They are not yet. There is a very mm. key distinction mm. yet, mm. Um, but they will be as Web3 games become bigger and bigger, um, as mm. more money flows into it, as more players come in, um, they will. So there are about 200 live games that are mm. um, Web3 games and about 1000 or 1200 more um, coming up in. Mm. Yep. Yeah. So um, as um, yeah, as as time goes, there are few of these um, studios and stuff um mm. sort of um mm. yeah um so i'm just thinking uh, just thinking which one um Allu- alluvium is considered mm. uh one of the web3 game is considered a triple a um web3 mm. game title um there's few there's four or five um that have some investment from mm. big sort of uh triple a type game publishers and stuff but they are quite um, still risk averse because some of their IP has been built over 10, 15 years or even more, yeah. like say Call of Duty or Star Wars franchise. Or mm. So they are very careful that they don't want to um, um, screw up their yes. IP. <laughs> Yes, yes, they don't want to. So if anything goes wrong, like right now what's happening in the markets, um, mm-hmm. because Web2 game is not connected to a market like <laughs> like a crypto ah, market, okay, or stock okay, market okay. or anything like that once you it attach your ip with the market it might not be your fault it's just that the whole market is going down and that's why every company good company bad company everyone's prices are down at the moment um in the market mm. so so as soon as you attach a token and a value and a monetary sign to it um people might associate that down um price to that oh. IP, so so they are going to be very careful. Um, mm. But by the time there is the next upswing, there will be a lot more. Pretty much everyone will have Web three titles. Um, every major, oh. um, yeah. So the it other thing is that, uh, yeah, they they ha- um, the um, Web three games allow interoperability. And um, Web2 gaming companies, just how they have worked, they have been really protective about their IP. Web3 is a lot more about collaboration. Mm. So so that is going to be interesting to see how they deal with it. So right now, mm. um, like uh, an example that I've given earlier in my podcast as well, that um, Steph Curry, um, who plays N- for NBA, for mm. warriors in us mm. he had like three thousand three pointers or something and then he with under armor the shoe brand he released mm. three thousand shoes um mm. on 
um, like virtual, like NFTs. And you can wear them in decentral land, you can wear them in sandbox, you can wear them in a couple of other um couple of other mm. platforms i think i um there's what else is there yeah but basically they would look that style so it, on your character if it's in sandbox it will look that style when you use that same nft in the other um metaverse it would look that style so there is interoperability so imagine if it's, it's your character um huh. it's it's mario and and you bring mario into gta and the mario mm. would look of the gta style but has some of the characteristics will have like a big mustache and have that's my dream clothes. yeah yeah so <laughs> yeah, yeah. how amazing that would be but then um it's only limited to the creativity of the of the game developer so it's like say you get a sniper rifle in call of duty and then you mm. want to bring it into a card game how would you do it? Mm. it you would have if you use that nft then maybe your name banner would have that um sniper rifle logo or your card deck of cards the back side of it which is the same will have that sniper rifle picture on it or the, your table mat would have that so there would be lots of different ways to integrate and then you they would be able to see that okay there's 30 million people who play counter strike and so and out of that 5 million active players have this type of a gun who really like it let's bring them in let's do this that anyone who holds that um if it was in an nft form um brings that in um they can have this sort of a um, logo or a, a symbol next to their name or an um or, or something or like this sort of an armor with that um sort of a trident next to oh. it to to show that um they had owned this in mm. in another game somewhere and so it's it's just a digital sort of a flex but it allows interoperability web3 and then mm. right now the web2 companies are very protective about their ip they might not want someone to mm. take it from one platform to another um so it will be this, a, it is telecom uh, debt <laughs> sorry sorry it's, it's telecom debt or yes it just history <laughs> Yes, yes 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 so yeah he's told um, about that yeah 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 so so they yeah they might they might not but what they do is they create sort of they do investments in web3 games rather than um, make their existing ip web3 enabled that's what they're trying with that's the first step and then the next step they will probably build their own games um and yeah but anytime there is a new um new technology um, new companies come up, new big companies. That's the only time you can come in. Just like um, when we went from Web 1 to Web 2 and there was the age of social media, all these new social media companies were born and they, they came up. Um, and, and same thing happens. Anytime there's new technology, new companies will come up and, and build new products and stuff that we have never heard of and they'll become really big giants. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really looking forward to this because I always dreamed of maybe my Mario and then I can uh, pedal my cars and then drive into the uh, uh, SimCity world or the GTA yes. world to do something in that game. Uh, but technically speaking, I know it is totally feasible in the web yes. world because it is like I uh, we are in the same world and then I just come from this castle game castle into another yes. game castle but uh, I don't uh, understand the mechanics between uh, maybe the commercial how how can Mario uh, partner with uh, GTA to do such a strange uh, what 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 is going to be fourth for this to happen in the referee world okay uh, uh, okay yeah. so mm. so the thing is because nfts are just a unique token number and that token number could um so um so say in the gta world if it recognizes that token number that means mm. you have a mario nft or a character um mm. and what it will do is it would have a designed a character like mario that only unlocks if you're using that token number that's how it would work technically um so yeah yeah so that's how it would work technically what's in it for um gta um gta would think that you know a lot of people who play mario they currently don't play gta so let's bring them in 
Um, let's mm -hmm. bring them into our ecosystem. Um, and this is the way to tempt them that now your Mario can drive a car in GTA. What's in it for Mario? The more places Mario's character is accepted, the more the value of that Mario's NFT will become. Um, mm. So say you want to play a game where you build your character and that character is accepted in 50 different games that you can go to any of the game's universe. Um, mm. So that, that's what in it, that's why there is a win-win thing for both the parties in that. Um, so so yeah. it, it is just like a GTA is open the gates and then uh, Mario, the Mario world gives some tokens to uh, the GTA and then uh, so because uh, maybe that's the uh, part, how the partnership is formed because to give me some tokens of yeah. your uh, NFT. So, that so, so let's say this this would happen if both Mario and um, GTA were a Web3 game. So if Ve Mario was a mm. Web3 game, then you would need yeah, a Mario nice. NFT. You would need a Mario NFT to play in Mario. So you know mm. NFT is like a long sort of uh, number. Um, so you would need that to play in Mario because it will check that, okay, you've got this NFT. Uh, you can go in and play and move your Mario around. Um, and then the same... Um, same number when mm. used in gta um mm. it will the character will look like gta because um what gta will do is it will check for that sort of mm. a number your nft that you have that mario nft and if it does then it will give you a character that looks like that so so it's just because of that sort of a token number that lives on the blockchain it's not um in a centralized um database with one company mm. that you are able to take that nft out and then you can just sell that nft on OpenSea. Oh. when you are done with it um mm. so and then the more people play with it the more places it's accepted the more the value of that nft will be so so that's the that's the dream um but there are so many limitations. We are so far away from it. Yes, yet. yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, there has to be games. The the mm. real lack here is of good quality games with engaging gameplay. Mm. Uh, so uh, technically and uh, speaking, uh, all of these are feasible, but it is not happened very often yet. Yeah, yes, not not very it. often. Yeah. There's some NFTs that are doing that, um, and that's called the interoperability. That that is the promise of Web three. Oh. <laughs> Whether it happens, it's yet to be seen. Or or how uh, some projects, like I told you about the Steph Curry shoes, um, it oh. happened with that. That's why they were immediately sold out because then it didn't matter. You know, you you are part of the. You've got a character in Decentraland or Sandbox or a couple of other um, metaverses. Mm your character can have the same shoe and they all have a different art style but it would look of that art style if it's blue shoes it will still look blue or blue and white it will still look blue and white just that in some if it's art style is more like a pixel based art style it will look like that if it's more 3d rendered then it will look like that in the in that one so it still looks at home um mm. but they would uh, have yeah yeah they would have worked with the game design uh, or like um all those three projects and said that okay um yeah make sure that it um it's yeah it is interoperable and stuff uh, i'm just curious what what types of companies uh, would would come to moonstream and then really spin up the game are they just creating games uh, or they are some sort of you just mentioned sues uh maybe coving apparel uh maybe i'm speaking any, of like any company, would they come to you yeah, to yeah. Break in? Uh, yeah what um, any any about? company it's on it's up to us that how fast we can network and how fast we can develop partnerships any company that wants to do um airdrops any company that wants to do loot boxes any company that wants to do leaderboards um or create mini games um, and mm -hmm. they have their own artwork, their own IP and all that, and they want to use our engine. Those are the types of companies that would come to us. Mm, got it. So, so it, it, could they... be, it could be another Web3 company. It could be an exchange, and they can see who the most active people in their community are, and then they want to reward that, and they will come to us, and we'll create, they'll use our engine to create loot boxes and airdrops and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's just so a very simple example, yeah. 
So basically, the, core, uh, the four core features are airdrops, mid games, loot boxes, and crafting. Uh, are the crafting core and leaderboards talent. and leaderboards as well on on chain. So then your um, mm -hmm. um, numbers mm -hmm. are sort of plus. We do have games. So you know what's happening is that games want their own marketplace. So say you have a game and there's so many NFTs in your game, tens of thousands of NFTs and loot boxes mm -hmm. and so many things in your mm -hmm. game and small items that you've given out. And then um, you want your community to go and swap things, exchange things, lend things to each other um, to play with. So in that case, you'll say that, can you build a marketplace like that? So then they use our engine to run their marketplace. Mm. Or or we create a marketplace for them. So that's the other things that that we do. Got it. Uh, basically, Boostream is a gaming engine that can help any companies yeah. to spin up a uh, wealthy game. Uh, as yeah. long as you have the game design ready uh, or and some sort yeah. of uh, creativity you already have in your mind and lay down all the yes. uh, requirements and also the uh, and then you can uh, how, how long is the development cycle two months or three months oh no no they can do it very very quickly we can show them to do it very quickly they, we can show them to how to use our platform and if they want to just get started with loot boxes and airdrops they can do it and you can they can use google spreadsheet or um and upload that oh. and go it's very simple it's very fast it's not it's not um um it's only if they want to build something um but we don't do sort of um it's not a service it's a product so mm. but but it helps if they have someone technical in their team who can use our product um oh. so most most of them have most of the gaming companies more and so yeah we even work with some really really small teams as well like two three person teams like indie game type teams mm. who have um but the thing is that um I think there's lots and lots of NFT projects who have done the NFT sale. They have NFTs, their values are going down. They would be mm. the ideal people to, to look into it, to create sort of a mini game or use a mini game from our mini game library and, and mm. sort of use their skin, their artwork, art style, and then use our engine in the back background. Got it. Huh. Um... I have another question because oh, I, I, yeah, yeah, I always have the difficulty to uh, explain to my friends, hey, what exactly is Breffy Games? And then because I come from a technical background and I'm also, uh, I, I'm not a hardcore gamer, but I know games. Uh, so mm, it, it is a second nature to me, but I don't exactly know how to explain to them. So I want to ask you if this uh, enlarged, like, accurate, the blockchain based game is like the Facebook in app game, but it's on chain with its own entry point. The uh the reason why I I I I'm asking I'm you thinking. if this yes, is yes. An, uh, accurate because I think I, I try I'm trying to use some web two uh games and make it energy in the web three world. So I want to yes. ask professor like you, yeah. Is that yeah, accurate? okay, okay, okay. So uh there's there's um two things you can do is um explain to them from the um from the aspect of a game developer that web one games um is um um like web one games are like when the mobile phones first came about and um you had um you had what do you call um um vodafone or at&t or um all these sort of phone companies that you mm -hmm. would um so if you had a game you would have to go through a phone company like that like vodafone or at&t and stuff um and you know they would charge the game developer 80 percent of the revenue so you made a mobile game you want that oh. mobile game pre-installed in the phone and that's because they, there was no app store so they all used to come pre-installed on your phone mm. um i don't know if you even remember back in the days this <laughs> the this is the days of like nokia and alcatel and all those type of phones so they the game developers used to pay 80 percent of their revenue 
to these phone companies. Then oh. came the Web2 games and the era of um, iOS store and Google Play store and all those. And then they charge 30% revenue um, <laughs> off from the game developer. So it's better, but it's still not there yet. We are not there yet. <laughs> With Web3 games, um, you can pay as much as sometimes even nothing. There is no publisher. You, it's you and then your player. That's it. There is no one in between. There is no Steam. There is no Xbox. There is no PlayStation. A lot of them are free to play as well. So you create your NFTs and anyone who holds that NFT, they go and play in that game. Um, mm. Plus it is interoperable. So as there are more games and they support each other, you'd be able to take your character from one game to another from one universe to another universe so mm. that those are the two ways to explain the third thing to explain is that in web 2 games or any of these games as soon as you as soon as you switch off your console your, your computer your phone that's it your characters are gone they're dead but in this your character is and like an nft that lives with you mm. in your digital wallet you take it out you can give it to your friend your nephew niece or to um or you can sell it on an open market. Yeah, very full of explanation. The first one is from the uh, game developer perspective, and the second one yes. is from the gamer perspective. That's very yes. great. Yeah. Um, yeah, to wrap up this session, uh, is, uh, is there anything that you would like our audience to know about Moonstream? You already have some great games like Crypto Unicorns, The Dark Forest, any exciting yes. things about Moonstream you want to let? Uh, we know? we will be there at the um, NF um, NYC dot NFT um, event. Mm. Um, hold on, just a second. Mm. Uh, it's just mm. next week. So if you are in um, if you are in New York, then mm. come and say hello to us between June twentieth wow. and twenty fourth. Um, oh. next week. Um, so yeah, if any of your listeners are in New York, just come and say hello to us, tweet us, mm. and we'll find you. So um, at moonstream. Um, dot you. Um, just a second, where's uh, the mm. Twitter? I will send you the link to. Um, but just in case if this is not published before that or this is published after that, I do mm -hmm. go to lots and lots of events. I speak at lots of events. So mm -hmm. my Twitter is at Sam Kamani. And from my Twitter, you'd find Moonstream's um, Twitter. So so connect with us, reach out to us. Um, um, mm -hmm. I can even share our Discord links and stuff. If you are into building games, it's not mm -hmm. a consumer. <laughs> it is if you need um, any help. Uh, technical mm -hmm. help then you can reach out to us or if you want to mm -hmm. try our product or if you have any questions you can um otherwise check out our website all the uh, moonstream.to mm -hmm. um it's like two moonstream <laughs> or two two moon kind of thing that's the play on the mm -hmm. words so yeah so check us out any questions or oh, the other thing is i have a podcast of my own called web mm -hmm. with sam kamani podcast where i talk a lot about yeah, gaming podcast, and so. mm -hmm. yeah yeah so i talk a lot about gaming and 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 all those sort of things uh these days mm. it's just been i've been meeting so many people in the gaming industry that it's a lot of them mm. have been about gaming <laughs> yeah uh what uh, uh what is the best place for people to reach out to you say like they, they want to be, build a game is it for linkedin or email or any social media yeah linkedin uh, um linkedin is mm. good um and linkedin is good and so mm. is twitter so either one is fine i do check my dms mm. are open on both so just mm. feel free to connect with me on on either one of them and you're yeah, mm. very happy to yeah connect and answer mm. Thank you uh, so much, Sam. Uh, it satisfied my curiosity a lot about not just gaming, but also the commercial operation behind the scene. Uh, yes. Yeah, for, yeah, especially how the Web2 world migrating to the Web3 world. What are their concerns? What are they trying to do? Uh, I think that's just not me. So many people are asking the same question because as, yes. as just gamers, even though, even though we are not game developers we would like to know what's happening behind them because uh, ultimately i'm the gamer and i would like to know when will this mario driving into gda happen 
Yes, yes. Oh, that that be so much fun though. I I definitely play that if as soon as that happens. <laughs> yeah, we need more people like you to build things. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. thank you so much again, Sam. Uh it's no my problem. pleasure to have you on the show. Oh, it's so much fun. Thank you so much, Arrow. <laughs>